So you want a new credit card, but you're not sure which is better, cash back or travel rewards credit cards. There's no clear cut answer for everyone. For some, cash back is better, but for others, travel rewards are better. I'm Sally French, a travel and credit cards expert at NerdWallet. Let me help you understand the differences, pros and cons between cash back versus travel rewards credit cards so you can find the best new credit card for you. With cash back, earning rewards is exactly what it sounds like. You spend money and you'll get a percent of your spending back in the form of cash. Sure, it's likely not literal hard cash, but it'll typically be something like a deposit to your account or a statement credit. Sometimes you can request a check by mail. With travel rewards cards, you'll earn a percent of your spending back not as cash, but rather as points or miles. Depending on the type of travel rewards credit card, you might actually earn specific hotel points or airline miles that only work at that particular brand of hotel or airline. Otherwise, travel rewards credit cards typically dole out travel points specific to a certain bank. For example, Chase specific points are referred to as Chase Ultimate Rewards points, while City specific points are called City Thank You points. Those points can be used to book travel through the bank's own travel portal, or they can be transferred to specific hotel or airline loyalty programs that partner with that bank. So for example, you can convert Chase Ultimate Rewards points to World of Hyatt points. Okay, so you get the differences. Now, which one is better? Let's first talk about the earning rates on these cards because it's not always that straightforward. Well, it is generally at least much more straightforward when it comes to cash back credit cards. A card that earns 2% cash back means in a $100 expense, let's say your grocery bill this week, nets you $2 back. Travel cards make it much more confusing. 2x miles per dollar spent on groceries isn't necessarily worth two cents. Miles vary in value by airline, but also by specific flight. The same for hotels. With a travel credit card that earns, say, two miles per dollar, and a $100 grocery bill could net you much more than $2 worth of airlines, but it could also net you much less, it all comes down to what a mile is worth. So let's briefly dig into that. Let's say you have a hotel room that costs 50,000 points and the nightly rate is $500. That makes your points worth one cent each. But the nightly rate on another night for that 50,000 point room could rocket up to $750, which makes that points redemption infinitely better because in that scenario, your points are worth 1.5 cents each. So how do you know what your points are worth? Nerds like me spend a good chunk of the year comparing cash to points prices to nail down this exact figure. We've then made it easy on you by building points calculators, which you can access on nerdwallet.com. But the reality is you aren't going to whip out NerdWallet's point calculator with every transaction. And if swimming in calculator soup seems brutal to you, then the winner in the battle between cash back versus travel credit cards might be easy. Cash is straightforward, thus it might be the winner. So we've discussed earning points, but what about redeeming them? Again, cashback cards make it easy. You're typically able to earn rewards as either a statement credit, which makes your next credit card bill a little cheaper, or as a direct deposit to your bank account. Use that direct deposit to pay for whatever expenses you're faced with. That could be travel, but it could also just be everyday expenses like your electricity bill. Meanwhile, redeeming travel points and miles can be confusing and it can be limiting. With travel credit cards that are tied to a brand like an airline or a hotel, you're generally stuck redeeming your rewards with that brand. That can be annoying if you decide you don't want to use that brand. Maybe you had a terrible experience on a flight and you've sworn off that airline. Maybe you just had a Delta card because you lived in Atlanta, which is a Delta hub, but you've since moved away to a city where there are no Delta flights. These cards can certainly be great if, let's say, you have a Marriott card and the hotel you're eyeing for your bucket list vacation is in fact a Marriott. But if you only have, let's say, Hyatt points and there's not a single Hyatt in the city you're vacationing in, but there is a Marriott, well, your Hyatt points aren't going to do you a ton of good trying to book that Marriott. These cards can also limit you from being able to cash in on alternative travel, such as vacation rentals. With travel credit cards tied to a bank as opposed to a specific airline or hotel, you're at least slightly less limited. These cards often function in tandem with transfer partners, which are usually airline or hotel brands. This can be more freeing than brand specific cards because you have a handful of brands to choose to exchange your points into rather than just one. But 
Sometimes this can just make it more confusing. Transfer rates aren't always one-to-one, -one, making it complicated what your points are worth. General travel credit cards also tend to allow you to book travel through their own travel portals. While these can make for a good redemption, the process means you do lose the benefits of booking directly, which can include things like better cancellation policies, but even sometimes benefits like free breakfast. Again, if we're considering ease of redemption, then cashback is the winner. Now we can't overlook annual fee. Both cashback and travel credit cards can have annual fees, though they both can have fee-free versions. Check out my other videos on this channel that discuss whether or not credit card annual fees are worth it. I do wanna make one disclaimer for cards that earn travel points. You might lose the points or at least some of their value if you stop paying the annual fee on the card. For example, let's say you have a Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card, which makes your points 1.5x when redeemed for travel. But let's say you decide to stop paying the annual fee, and in that case, you decide to downgrade your card to a no annual fee Chase card. While Chase still lets you keep your points, they'll only be worth 1x, not 1.5x. Now, what about extra perks? These can vary by card, so it's tough to say outright. Generally speaking, travel credit cards tend to have better perks, and they also seem to have higher annual fees. More perks versus a higher annual fee is a trade-off you'll have to weigh for yourself. But I will say you're unlikely to find those wildly lavish perks that come on travel credit cards via cashback credit cards. Some of my favorite travel credit card benefits include free night certificates, which you can sometimes even find on cards with annual fees less than $100. There's also Priority Pass, which is a membership program that gets you into more than a thousand airport lounges worldwide. And many travel credit cards include automatic elite status. These benefits are great, but even understand the restrictions. For example, free night certificates, if they exist, are generally only good for standard hotel rooms, which doesn't work if there's no standard room availability. And lounges can be great, but not if it's closed or if your airport doesn't have a lounge. That said, even certain cashback credit cards do have perks. Though not all do, common perks on cashback cards can include TSA pre-check, cell phone protection, or travel insurance. In this department, NerdWallet declares that travel credit cards typically tend to be better simply because they have more perks. That said, the caveat is you must be willing to make flexible travel arrangements if you're using a specific travel branded credit card. So how do you decide which card to go with? First, consider your spending. Do you always fly United? If so, you're a better candidate for United card versus the person who flies American one day, Southwest another day, and United the other. If you're optimizing every benefit, travel credit cards can also pay off. If you stay at a hotel that would otherwise cost $1,000 a night, but you're using it on a hotel credit card's free night certificate, that's an incredible payoff. Just realize that managing your points can easily become a part-time job. Look, it's my full-time job. If you're going to get into points and miles, accept that it's going to become some sort of hobby for you. If you do just want to keep it simple and you have your own job and other things to worry about and other hobbies that aren't credit cards, travel credit cards just might not be worth the headache. In that case, cashback is A-OK. -okay. Now tell me, do you prefer travel or cashback credit cards? Leave a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe.